Wow. Can you believe Donovan Mitchell was traded to the Cavs? Now we gotta talk about what this means for the Cavs and the rest of the NBA. So first, let's talk from the Cavs perspective. We have so much to dissect here. So first of all, I think this is a win for the Cavs. The thing is, like, yes, they gave up. Okay, so they gave up three unprotected first round picks and two pick swaps. So it is a lot of picks, but they're going to be really good. So those picks aren't going to be lottery picks. They're not going to be high draft picks. And for sure, you could find good players later down in the draft in the first round, but people want the lottery picks. Number two, they gave up Colin Sexton, who, I mean, they weren't going to keep anyway because he wanted a bag. They weren't going to pay him a bag. So it was kind of just like an easy send off for them. Like, yes, they wanted to keep him, but for the price they wanted to pay. And so because they had someone to actually take him as part of the trade package, so they had to give up less pieces in the end, it's a win-win for them. Now, I was sad that Agbaji was traded because, oh, I was, I was rooting for them to draft him, and they did, and I thought it was a perfect fit. So I am a little sad about that. I think he has star potential written all over him. And then they gave up Laurie Markkinen. So I think overall, they gave a decent package to Utah, but I don't think they overpaid. I already thought the Cavs were going to win 50 games. I mean, they were rolling last year before Jared Allen got hurt. So now it only solidifies that even more so. Now, from the Jazz perspective, I think they also won. I think this is actually one of those trades where it's win and win. The Jazz got a nice young and budding player in Colin Sexton. They gave him four years, $72 million, so he got the money he wanted as well. Like I said, Agbaji, I think he's going to be good. I hope I'm not butchering his name. I hope that's how you pronounce it. But I think he's going to be really good. So that's a nice pickup for them. And, of course, unprotected picks. You know Danny Ainge loves his picks. So they have a lot of picks from Donovan Mitchell and the Rudy Gobert trade. And now it'll just be icing on the cake whatever other trades they make, like Jordan Clarkson, you know, Mike Conley. So they're looking good over there in Utah. Like, they have, you know, they have ways to make moves now. So, like I said, I think both teams won. So what does this mean for the rest of the NBA, though? It means keep your eye on the Cavs. Because I was... I was keeping an eye on them last year, and I was just really upset when Jared Allen got hurt because I was like, oh, I think they would have made the playoffs had Jared Allen not got hurt. I don't even think that's a bold prediction. I think a lot of people can agree with that. So now another year together, healthier, got Donovan Mitchell, Mobley should be better, more chemistry, Cavs, number two seed. You heard it here first. I think the rest of the NBA needs to take them seriously if they didn't already because they are loaded at every position. They may not have the biggest superstar, like they don't have, you know, Steph Curry, LeBron on their team, but at every position, they have players who can get it done and are talented, can score, defend. Like they have players at every position who could do things. 